Good morning, beloveds. I have had a morning. Uh, I got up, I went to the gym. <laughs> Tom did not go with me because Tom caught a cold. Um, and, oh, wearing a mask in 63, 65 degree weather and an outdoor because the gym is in a garage, not a whole lot of fun. <laughs> uh, when I got to the ab workout, um, I did four different kinds of sit-ups and uh, <laughs> by the end of it, I couldn't see it all. My glasses were completely fogged up. Um, and then tomorrow, it's going to be in the 30s. So, yay! Welcome to winter. Um, but it's going to get like 76 today. So, uh, it is February 16th. Our title is God Made This World and I Find It Good Today. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth spirit's handiwork. And that is Psalm 19, 1. All right. Our only contact with the world is through our five senses. Each of us reacts to the impressions that come to us from them in different ways. When we make judgments of the world and of our particular situations in the world, we are actually stating our own limited viewpoints. We are the only thinkers in our individual worlds. We alone decide and evaluate the impressions that come into us. No matter what negative reactions appear in the world, appear, hang on. No matter what negative reactions appeared in the mind of Jesus, he cleared them out and saw the goodness of God in his world. He was able to heal, prosper, and free those around him because he kept his thoughts cleared of false judgment, which his senses told him were seemingly true. We can lift the negatives of the universe and see through them to the divine world made by the one perfect mind. Today, I dedicate my five senses to the presence of God. Whatever my senses tell me about myself, my fellow human, or my world, I shall question. I shall see if it is in accord with God's idea of humanity and God's world. I shall see if it accords with a perfect God, creating a perfect human, maintaining that human in a perfect world in order, in a perfect world of order and love. I refuse to accept any judgment based upon false standards of illness, fatigue, lack, and harmony. These are not of God. They cannot be true of my world, myself, or my, my fellow people. I affirm that God is perfect. God made me perfect, and God made this world a heavenly place. I know this is the truth. Only God I see, taste, touch, smell, and hear, for God is all there really is. Okay. So I have two immediate thoughts. One, quantum physics. Um, I know enough to know that I don't know anything. And if you dig into quantum physics, it will blow your mind. Um, let me get back to that. The second one is uh, there's a meme that pops up on the social medias somewhat regularly. And it's talking about a, a, a field of dandelions. And what I would say to you about the field of dandelions is that's what he's talking about right here. When you look at a field of dandelions, do you see a field of flowers or do you see a field of weeds? It's literally about perception. Um, because we can walk into things that don't appear good. And yet, we have it within us to find the good there. Um, and when we walk into situations where we are looking for the good, uh, when we find it, then that gives us the foothold to change a non-preferred situation. Um, and sometimes the good is what we bring in with, we bring into the situation uh, with, with ourselves. So that's one of the reasons why we're talking about no matter what the situation is, always, always, always look for the good. Because that's the foothold that we need to be, get, to be able to change the situation. 
that gives us a place to focus our energy uh, and and go from there. And then the other part in here, and, I'll, I, and I'm going to go back through it, and we can talk about quantum physics. Um, because in quantum physics, they talk about the observer. Uh, we talk about the observer in science of mind too. So, eh. but in but literally, the world that you see and the world that I see, we can be literally looking at the very same thing. It's kind of like with art, and it's different. Which is why he talks about us living in our own world, because our own world, the world that we live in, the world that we live in, the world that we share with all of our other fellow humans is colored by our perceptions. And if you have, because you know those people who live with the rose colored glasses and everything looks rosy and shiny. And sometimes, I mean, even I, and I am that rose colored glasses person, you know, we look at the, we look at those people and go, well, they're crazy because they don't see all the mess. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they see it, but they see it as an opportunity. And so, uh, and that's why we talk about the trend of our thoughts. That's why we talk about the trend of our consciousness. You know, if you have a more negative t trend to your thoughts, a more negative trend to your, um, you know, consciousness, then things are going to look different than people who tend to have a more, I hesitate to use the word positive, but positive outlook. Um, you know, your optimist vers vers versus your pessimist. They literally do. They can walk through the same hallway, but they're going to see it differently. So, all right. So the title is God Made This World and I Find It Good Today. I mean, <laughs> we believe that everything is God, so God made this, you know. Uh, and a lot of what we look around us, God made through us. And if we're not happy with the outcome then maybe it's because we are not participating in the creative process the way we could. All right. So the heaven declare the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament, meaning the world, showeth God's handiwork. All right. We are co-creators for a reason. If the world isn't up to your standards, then you literally have the power to affect that because you are a co-creator with God. God can do amazing things for you, but God can only do them through you. So uh, our only contact with the world is through our five senses. They're starting to argue that we actually have more than five senses, but he's talking about touch, taste, smell, you know, the, one, the usual five that we know about. Um, each of us reacts to the impressions that come to us from them in different ways. I was talking about the rose colored glasses. When we make judgments of the world and of our particular situations in the world, we are actually stating our own limited viewpoints because the five senses that he's talking about here are material senses. Uh, and they are, by virtue of being material, limited. We are the only thinkers in our individual worlds, and this is where quantum physics comes in. We literally live in our own world because nobody sees our world exactly the way that they do. Um, in class last night, somebody asked Jesse about treating uh, for other people. And that was the, that was the, what he said is even if I talk to them for, you know, a good portion of time, I know, a, I only know a sliver about them, you know, so I it, that I can treat specifically for what they ask for, but beyond that, you know, I can't. I have to treat for their highest and best because I don't live in their world. I can't live in their world. Um, we alone decide and evaluate the impressions that come into us. And there's no way to communicate that to another person fully. At least not yet. When we shed the mortals, may, the mortal coil, maybe. But right now, eh. Um, no matter what negative reactions appear 
in appeared in the mind of Jesus, he cleared them out and saw the goodness of God in his world. That is what made Jesus so successful. He knew who he was and he knew that there were possibilities. Um, and that that was the way to get to them. So he was able to heal, prosper, and free those around them because he kept his thoughts, claw, mm, because he kept his thoughts cleared of the false judgment which his senses told him were seemingly true. Um, we look a fact in the face and see the reality behind it. Uh, which is not, that is an Ernest Holmes quote, and I didn't do it quite, you know, that was me paraphrasing it. So um, it means that when we are working with illness, you know, it's like, yes, okay, we see. This is what you are going through. This is an experience that you are having, but this is not who you are. Yes. It is an experience that you are having. Yes, we are going to support you through it. Yes, we are going to do all that we can do. Prayer support, you know, just being there and encouraging you, you know, to seek the appropriate treatment for whatever it is that you are working on. But we are going to see the truth behind you because what illness you may be experiencing is not who you are. You are a beloved child of God. So I can see you as happy, healthy, and whole. I can see you as perfect because perfect means whole. Because that's the truth of you. The experience that you are having now is not the truth of you. And that's how Jesus did it. Did he do much more than that? Yes, but this is our impression of what he's doing. And this is, this is where we get it. Um... We can face the negatives of the universe and see through them to the divine world made by the one perfect mind. All of the negatives, the negative impressions that we experience are not the truth of us. Are they, are they happening? Yes, we're not denying that. But they are not the truth of us. They are an experience that we are having. The truth of us is that we are beloved children of God. All right? If we focus on that, anything is possible. All right. Today, I dedicate my five senses to the presence of God. You want a call to action? There you go. Every single sense. Where is the God in that? What my senses tell me about myself, my fellow people, or my world, I shall question, especially when they're negative. Especially when they're negative. Um, there is definitely a benefit to seeing the good, to looking at looking for the good. Now, at no time does looking for the good invite you to put yourself in a situation that is dangerous or harmful. All right. Sometimes there are situations where we can look for the good, but we can do it from a safe place. All right. Bear that in mind. Do not stay in relationships to look for the good. All right? You can look for the good from a safe distance. I, I shall see if it is in accord with God's idea of people and God's world. I shall see if it is it, it accords with a perfect God, a whole God, creating a perfect person and maintaining that person in a perfect world of order and love. Oof. And if it doesn't, what is mine to do? All right. And that is a question you always want to ask yourself when you walk into a situation that is not healthy, whole and safe. All right. What is mine to do? Um, you can't fix people. The only person you can fix is yourself. You can't fix people. Um, so what is yours to do in the situation? Is it yours to do to actually speak to the person to physically, you know, or is it yours to know the truth of them from a safe place? Always ask yourself, what is mine to do? All right. Um, 
And one of the things that is ours to do, no matter what the situation is, is to ref I refuse to accept any judgment based upon false standards of illness, fatigue, lack, and inharmony. These are not of God. They cannot be true of my world, myself, or my fellow people. So when I am in situations, I want I, I don't want to make judgments from that. I want to make judge judgments from the the order, the harmony, the peace, not from judgment or not from illness, lack, fatigue, and in harmony. Which is one of the reasons why it's, it's called a spiritual bypass when I, somebody will say, well, I'm having this, I'm having this experience. And somebody else turns to them and says, well, what did you do to create that? Okay. You're coming from, you're coming from, you're coming from the illness, fatigue, lack, and inharmony. All right. And that's not where we're supposed to judge. It's not helpful to you. It's not helpful to them. It, it's, I see you having this experience. I know the truth of you. This is not who you are. Um, how can I support you? Uh, these, okay. Yeah. I affirm that God is perfect. God made me perfect. God made this world a heavenly place. Okay. So I might suggest that you go and look in the mirror and you say, I affirm that God is perfect. God is whole. That God made me perfect. That God made this world a heavenly place. I mean, that's a heck of an affirmation. I know this is the truth. Only God I see, taste, touch, smell, and hear. For God is all there really is. Alright, so the mission today, should we choose to accept it? <laughs> if you don't know. Is to dedicate our five senses to the presence of God. To really look for the God in the situation today. To come up from that order and love. And see the reality behind the appearances, behind the material appearances. So, um, and if you can do that, you can do anything. And you can do it. I have faith in you. All right. I also encourage you, as I always do, to do something loving for yourself, something kind for yourself, something compassionate. Um, if you want to do one of each, that's fine. If you want to do one that includes all, that's good too. Uh, today, that loving, kind, and compassionate thing... Uh, for my husband was to not to have him stay home from the gym he needs to rest he needs to recover uh, and so he didn't go to the gym and then my loving kind and compassionate thing for um, my trainer was because I have I'm, I'm living with a person with a cold I wore a mask to protect him because he has a show this weekend um, so I wanted to make sure I feel fine just wanted to make sure you know, um, but that loving, kind, compassion thing was I went to the gym and worked out and did that and uh, took care of that. And I took I engaged my mind and my body. So I like to do different loving, kind, and compassionate things every day. I got other people like one of my friends, that cup of tea. That's every morning, every morning. That is his loving, kind, compassion thing he does for himself. It's about creating a habit. It's about creating a default setting. It's about creating a response, a first response. When you have that bank of loving, kind, compassionate for yourself, you can do it for anybody. And you can do it no matter the situation. So when we are faced with those non-preferred appearances, we have this bank of love, kindness, and compassion that can help us to see through them. To see the truth, to see the reality, to see the God behind. All right. Uh, I'm going to move into the process of my day. So I'm going to encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body to uh, go get that face full of sun. It's kind of cloudy around here. So hey, I don't know how much light we're going to get, but I did get some and to get that uh, to drink plenty of water and whatever else you do, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around you. As that psalm said, the firmament, the earth shows God's works. Sometimes we just need to open our eyes and see. So when you look at dandelions, do you see flowers or do you see weeds? 
All right, beloveds. Um, I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a warm day, <laughs> a comfortable day, a restful day, a productive day. What kind of day do you need to have? Any kind of day. Um, a supercalifragilisticexpialidocious day. A good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. Uh, I am going to remind you that tonight at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, if you're watching this on February 16th, um, we are going to have an amazing soul session. All of our soul sessions are amazing. All of them. They're fantastic. I'm particularly excited about this one because she was one of my teachers in ministerial school. Um, practitioner Tracy Brown will be with us. She's going to have that conversation with Jesse. Uh, there may or may not be other people because he's encouraging other people to, to be involved in the conversation. So we'll see because uh, there's a whole committee that does that present, presents these. But she's amazing. She's wonderful. She has thoughts. And this is a good thing. She has definite thoughts and she has a definite way of seeing the world. So I encourage you, if you don't catch it live, then please come back and catch it later. Or I will put it on the YouTube channel too, if you, if you prefer that. Um, and I cross post them. So it'll be in the February, it'll be in the guest speaker, it'll be in the soul session. Uh, want to make sure that as many people see this cause she's an amazing, she's an amazing teacher. Um, and the, one of the best, one of my favorite things about her is she is a practitioner. She is happy to be a practitioner. She doesn't believe that practitioner is a step to minister to being a minister. Um, she fully embraces being a practitioner. So if you ever, if you just, if you are a practitioner and people are pushing you into ministerial school, you can look at it and go, nope, nope. Tracy Brown, Tracy Brown. You can do phenomenal work as a practitioner. You do not have to become a minister and I bet you anything she would tell you, and so would Ernest, you don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a practitioner to do amazing work. All you have to do is know who you are and who you are as a beloved child of God. So please catch that 7 p.m. Central Time Facebook, uh, the Creative Life Spiritual Center Facebook Live page, which is what this is. Um, or catch us on the YouTube later. So catch us on the social medias. Like us, subscribe us. That way, when we do things like that, you'll see them. You'll get notified. So, all right. <laughs> know that you are loved, and I will see you next time. Uh, oh, I forgot. If you are interested in knowing what else is going on, email info at creativelife.org. Get on the constant contact, and that way, when fun things happen, interesting things happen, you will see them. All right, Rita, you want to say good night? Or good morning? Or goodbye? Nope. <laughs> She's just purring away. All right. See you next time.